Hey guys, I'm Heath Wright with the group Ricochet. Blast off to the music universe. 90s country is back in full swing in 2023. Ricochet back with a new re-recorded album and some new songs on it as well. It's called Then and Now, The Hits and More. And we talked to Heath Wright, the founder and leader and all out great musician. I didn't realize uh, he was a guitarist before a singer. Of course, he fronts the band and uh, they've, they've got this new project out today. We've premiered the re-recording of Love is Stronger Than Pride. If you are watching this outside of our website, themusicuniverse.com, you'll have to click the link in this video because that's where you're going to be able to hear that for copyright and licensing purposes. We're not able to embed it into this uh, episode, but uh, you're going to want to check that out because they are true to original recordings. That's awesome. You know, I had a chance to talk with uh, uh, Heath at Country for a Cause, and the man is so cool, he stole my Sharpie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so red is their color, and I had him sign. We do this thing where we um, – I don't have any in here that I could show you. But we have these cards. I'm saying this for the benefit of the viewer. I know you know this, buddy. But right. we have these cards that we have these people sign. I take them with me to um, – everything I do where I know I'm going to be meeting people and we'll have the opportunity to do that, that we're interviewing. And he goes, man, I like this Sharpie. Can I keep it? I'm like, He's like, I'll get back to you, but red's my color. I said, absolutely. <laughs> go ahead. And I actually had to chase him down at the end of the night to get it back. <laughs> oh my gosh. Seriously. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I was going back to music, to music yeah. city center for the rest of the, uh, uh, thing and I had the rainbow wow. sharpies. I'm like, I can't be without red. And a couple of people did use red. So uh, right. you're welcome to my sharpies anytime. He, it was, it was, <laughs> it was a pleasure getting to talk with you. I'll tell everybody why I couldn't be with you on this episode later on. But I want to get sure. to it. How was it talking to him on video? We've been doing this lately, kind of bringing some people back. Now that I think we're fully out of the throes of 2020 mm -hmm. and what all of that did to us, and people are back with projects. Uh, we're, we have been going back and talking to some people that we talked to on the phone that I remember being at my parents' house in Pennsylvania, talking to on the phone in my little office there, to now we get to do them on the computer and, and on broadcast yeah. uh, on the camera. How was it to talk to him on video? No, it was great um, doing video with him and seeing the little uh, you know Ricochet album behind him framed. Um, and stuff, but we get into some, uh, some weeds here. Uh, you know, we, we, as we often do with artists, we kind of go into the, uh, business side of things and, uh, we talk about all kinds of stuff, but this time he, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but I do have to say that the band is fully recorded on this project and you'll just have to watch the rest of it to, uh, to see what I mean. Heath Wright from Ricochet. Welcome back to the music universe. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. How about you, my friend? Uh, doing well. Enjoying the tunes. You guys celebrating the 25th anniversary of He Left a Lot to be Desired. I'm really digging this new uh, Then and Now record. Uh, some re-recordings. I see what some new stuff. Yes. You know, I... Uh... I, I could, had kind of resigned myself to the fact that I was, I was really at a point in my career that I was going to just come home and play shows on the weekends and, and uh, just kind of live out the rest of my life like that. And I, I decided uh, during the pandemic, actually, I had a lot of time to sit around and think. We, re we only did nine shows that whole year, 2020. And I decided that I, I wanted to give a, a call back to a guy that had, that had contacted me. Uh, a guy named Josh Blight with Spinning Place Management had contacted me and wanted to know if I would be interested in in uh, maybe kind of giving a little boost to my career. And I, uh, at first I turned him down. I said, no, I'm just going to play shows on the weekend. That's it. And he says, well, I think we could do some things for you if you change your mind. Six months later, anyway, I did change my mind. I sat down with him and his partner. We uh, kind of went through a game plan. And I said, one of the things I want to do is I want to, I want to record new music. And, uh, I'd been actually been in the studio doing some stuff like that. I had a, several songs in the can already, and so we we long story short, we decided that it was time to uh, 
to put out some new music. So, so we, uh, we decided to record six of the old original hits, six hits that people will remember, songs like Daddy's Money, What Do I Know, Love is Stronger Than Pride, songs like that. But then we also realized it had been about 10, almost 15 years at this point uh, since we had had anything new out. And uh, like I said, we had some of these songs in the can already, but we had never released them on a nationwide basis. So went in and, and uh, recorded 10 new songs, and here they here it is, it's all, all in one package. It's called Ricochet, Then and Now, Hits and More. So uh, hopefully folks will, will take to it. Hopefully they'll like it. Yeah, and you're celebrating the 30th anniversary of the formation of the band. And the project is available today, August 18th, as we're airing this. And we actually premiered uh, Love is Stronger Than Pride. So that will be included with um, your interview here awesome. on our website. Um, and I was just listening to that before you hopped on. And I, I was texting your publicist. I'm like, are these re-recordings? Because they're hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You know, uh, and that was always a pet peeve of mine. When somebody would go in and re-record uh, songs, after you've done a song on the road for several years, you, you tend to you tend to get a little bored with it and you start changing it. And as an audience, as a, mm -hmm. as a fan of country music, that always bugged me because uh, I want to sing along. I want to sing along the way I remember hearing it on the radio. And so I would, uh, I told the guys, I said, we're going to go in and we're going to re-record these songs. We're going to do them exactly note for note the way they were recorded the first time so that's what we did we went in and re-recorded everything kind of gave everything a little bit of a facelift uh technology is much different now than it was back in the 90s when we first recorded these tunes so uh, i think it sounds better i think it sounds cleaner uh but like you said it's 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 true to the original recordings we we paid uh we paid homage to those original recordings all the solos i learned i relearned all those guitar solos note for note and uh it's a uh, i i'm proud of it i'm proud of the way it turned out so you're actually the lead guitarist on I am, the tracks? Yes. Yeah, I'm the lead guitarist. Now I, I played I played every note on these new recordings. And I'm not gonna lie to you, brother. We uh back in the nineties country music has a certain way of doing things. And most producers mm -hmm. most producers use this one this one little uh oh I don't want to say cookie cutter, but this one uh, style of recording and it, it's it's efficient i'm not gonna lie it is very efficient but they bring in they bring in session musicians so we didn't even get to play on those early right. recordings I, I did i played on the on the first one uh the first recording i i was the only band member who got to play on that first recording uh the first album i did the guitar solos on uh ease my troubled mind but i honestly i I have guitar videos on the market right now. I'm a guitar player. I was a guitar player before I was a singer. Most people don't even know that till they come to a show. So I, you know, I've always prided myself yeah. on my guitar abilities. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to say it. It, 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 it the, to have to turn the guitar duties over to somebody else. It really did back in the '90s. So when uh, when we came time to go in and redo these old songs and and re record and record some new stuff, I was like, we're going to record every note every single note ourselves so this new project is actually the first ricochet project and it's actually us it's us playing us singing mm -hmm. there's some bands out there and i'm not going to name names but there's some bands out there that didn't even sing on their own projects i mean like the lead singer would sing and then they would bring in harmony vocals you know session singers to sing the harmony vocals that at least that wasn't us back in the 90s at least we got to sing every note of, of our of our harmonies I get that's the Nashville way, but I find that a little misleading to the listeners because when you're dubbed Ricochet or yeah. Alabama or whoever, and you find out that for the most part, it's just the singer, it's a little disappointing. It is. It is disappointing. I remember being a fan of, of, of some bands out there that, and then finding out later that they didn't even sing or they didn't even play on their own records. And some of them didn't even sing their own harmony parts. And I remember thinking, well, that's, that's kind of uh, that's kind of lying to the audience, don't you think? Uh, shoot, I, uh, I like as I said, Nashville's has their own way of doing things. They've got they've got their formulas and it and it works. But uh, it I if you're going to be a band and the and the band is the artist, then you should let the band be the artist. I know it may take a little longer in the studio because we don't do that all the time. We go out on the road and and we play live shows and so the studio world is a whole different world and you got to have different type of gear. You got to be geared up differently than, than you would if you're playing live, but uh, mm -hmm. you can still make it work. 
And and fortunately, there are some bands out there who have made it work from day one. Diamond Rio is one of my favorite bands. And imagine a Diamond Rio record without those cool Jimmy Olander guitar bends and and uh, great uh, Gene Johnson mm. mandolin. You know, imagine um, imagine if they just brought in session players to play for Diamond Rio. You know, it just wouldn't wouldn't be the same sound. Yeah. Yeah, and they're actually back too. They're they're back with a couple new members after a couple retired. They've got a new single. So '90s country is, I mean '90s in general, but I mean '90s country is just being thrown back in our faces, and I love it because that is my ultimate uh, favorite subgenre. You you could say era of of country music. It's just I'm glad it's back. Man, I appreciate you saying that because I, I I've noticed a huge resurgence in 90s country as well i i don't know what the cause is i but i think it's awesome uh, we have girls or women full-grown women in their 30s early 30s come through our autograph line saying things like i used to love that song daddy's money when i was in kindergarten my dad told me it was written about me it's like R kindergarten really am i that old I, I guess I am because that was, you know, that song was number one in 1996. But hell, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I'm just happy that they're that they love it still, you know, and they sing along with every word of it, and they listen uh -huh. intently to the new songs that we put in our show. So you know, there's some new music that uh, you know, if you come to a Ricochet show, you're going to see a little bit of everything, some of the old, some of the new, some really weird stuff that you're not expecting. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's live music too, because that that's what I love about it. So. With these being recorded true to the original, the live show, are they pretty much the same, or do you guys kind of have a little more leeway with it and jam? Well, we we like to stick as close to the live recordings as possible. Like I said, people want to be able to sing along to the songs that they remember, so we're not going to change them to the point that, that they're unrecognizable. Uh, there's only a certain number of bands that can do that. For example, the Eagles, when they did their, their live or Hell Freezes Over album, and they completely redid Hotel California. You can do that if you're the Eagles, but you know, imagine us doing a, a slow swing style version of Daddy's Money. That's not going to work, people. But we do some weird, <laughs> we do some weird stuff in our show on on Daddy's Money that people aren't expecting. Uh, I just okay, I'll say this: Think Blue Man Group. <laughs> you, okay. If you come to Drums. a show, you'll know what I I'm like talking it. about. So yeah, so there's there's some fun stuff going on in, in, in the songs that that they're they're not exactly like the record, but they're as close as we can get it with with uh, a few surprises here and there. Yeah, and I think that's great. I, I I think that's what people come to live, you know, to see live music for. And uh, Matt and I chatted with you back, I think, during the pandemic, and you had mentioned that you know you thought you were going to kind of stay doing your your farm in Oklahoma and then playing the shows and then now suddenly you know you guys are you guys are doing this so um I, I love that because I've been waiting for new ricochet music and just you know hearing that it's the band this time playing everything too is is great because you know daddy's money was a big number one for you guys yes it was I, I thought you deserved many more well, thank you, my friend. Yeah, and, and uh, I can't believe I'm 56 years old and I got a new record deal and a new project coming out. I, you know, last year, I bought a tour bus, and uh, our our tour schedule has increased significantly. We signed with a new uh, booking agent, and like I said, we have new management, a new record label, this new project coming out, and we're out. We're we're just promoting it right now, and and so our our fair and festival uh, tour schedule is it's filling up. So I. Uh, I'm, I want to invite everybody out to a show and we like to get close to our fans. You know, when, when, uh, when we're done with the show, we like to get out front and sign autographs and meet people and, and, uh, you know, hug the babies and kiss the mama. So just a, a big, big, uh, thank you to everybody who's kept our career going this long, you know? And what are you hoping people get out of this album besides just the nostalgia of these, you know, classic hits and now the new stuff, what are you hoping people will take from it? I'm hoping people will sit down and besides remembering these songs that they might might have forgotten and and remembering them fondly and and having the nostalgic aspect there I'm hoping that they'll listen and they'll think to themselves wow these guys really are artists these guys I mean I was doing an interview earlier before I signed on with you and someone told me that that uh, you know it sounds like you might have broke a bunch of rules in country music we've got songs on there that that don't feel 
like your basic country song. You know, they feel like maybe a, I, we recorded a Mark Broussard song called The Beauty of Who You Are. And it is as bluesy and swampy as you can get. And, and I'm really stretching my vocal range on that song. I wrote a song with uh, my buddy Brett Jones called Sweet Tea. It's got a kind of a cool swampy guitar part in it. Uh, and so, you know, there's great instrumental breaks on on the on these new tunes that i'm really proud of some of my guitar solos on there and then and, and i'm proud that we've managed to stick true to the to the big vocal sound that big harmony blend that we always had i'm i'm really proud that that has been something that has been constant throughout the ricochet days and that that's what i'm hoping people will walk away from when they listen to this album though i'm i'm hoping they'll think wow they still got it <laughs> yeah and was this recorded in nashville and how long did it take to put it all together it was. It was recorded in Nashville. It was recorded in bits, bits and pieces. We uh, we started working on this thing about a decade ago, honestly. So a lot of these songs have been in the can for about ten years, um, and like I said, we uh, we just didn't have a way of, of getting when we after we left our label, and I believe it was the year two thousand. We never really signed with another label that had nationwide distribution capabilities. And now, you know, obviously with the internet. And all the DSPs out there, your digital service providers like uh, iTunes and Spotify and Pandora, all of these these uh, DSPs are are helping us get it out worldwide. So it's a uh, it's a I don't know it's it's such a cool feeling to know that I can still do this and and uh, still maybe make a splash. Oh yeah, and there's a limited version uh, on vinyl, 250 copies. That's quite limited if if you yes. ask me what, well, so what, gave you, what made you guys decide to do the vinyl I'm getting one. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough what why such a limited amount well I, I don't that's a good question to be completely honest i hadn't even realized we were going to press it on vinyl until just now so i uh i think that's awesome i'm sure that if it sells uh, you know vinyl is coming back around again i just got a new uh, a new mm -hmm. turntable and, and a new you know vinyl system i've been kind of adding to my record collection here recently so a lot of there's a lot of audio files out there that love love vinyl so who knows if uh i will probably end up signing most of those vinyl copies uh and you know and uh, like you said limited pressing we we may or may not that's i leave those decisions up to the record label they know what the market is they know how many people are, are buying vinyl as opposed to people who are downloading uh some people still like to have that physical piece to hold in their hand and and put on their turntable. So we'll we'll see. It could be two fifty. It could be five hundred. We don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm a CD guy, so will yeah. I be able to pick this up on CD as well? Oh yes. Yeah, you'll be able. To, I think you can actually pre-order it right now. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, Heath, it's always a pleasure, and uh, looking forward to the album and hearing what everybody has to say about it. Hopefully, seeing you guys out west. I'm in. Bakersfield. So if you guys come my way, I'd love to check you guys out and uh, say oh, hi. Bakersfield, home of the Crystal Palace. Yeah, we we would love to come back to yep. Bakersfield. It's, it's been several years. I really appreciate the time you took with me, buddy. Thank yeah. you, man. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Anything else you would like to add? Well, as I said before, come to a Ricochet show. You haven't really uh, you haven't experienced Ricochets till you've seen us live. Uh, we're going to do your favorite songs. We're going to do some new stuff off the new album, and we're going to do a few things that will surprise you. So we're, we look forward to, to seeing you out on the road and, and meeting you after the show. So much fun. I love when there are reasons that either you or me can't do them, and we get to be one-on-one -on -one with these people sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think um, I think if we ever get Reba, I'm going to have to check my food. That's a one-on-one. Like... -on -one. <laughs> me with her. For like a two week period leading up to the interview, because I know you will want to do that one by yourself. <laughs> well, I, I might need you for that just to keep the nerves a little calm. But uh, you know, once once you get into it, everybody's usually pretty. Cool I've been teasing. And... I've been teasing, buddy, since um, I don't know where the box is going to be. So I don't know which side of me you're me you're on right now. But um, I have been teasing, buddy, since. June that I interviewed Reba because I asked the question that broke the news about the Madison Square Garden uh, release. She didn't you know, give any I details. think we're running out of time here. We need to <laughs> um, continue. Yes. So the album, the album is out today, today, then and now the hits and more ricochet. I love nineties country coming back. I had a chance to see him 
teasing about a Sharpie aside, I did get to watch his show at Country Fair Cause. If you're ever in Nashville over CMA Fest and you get in a couple of days early, it is the unofficial kickoff the night before. There's a lot of unofficial kickoffs. There's Marty Stewart's uh, <laughs> jam at the Ryman, the late night jam that is not really a late night jam anymore because it's over by midnight at the absolute latest. Yeah. Um, and there's Country for a Cause, which uh, dear friends of ours run, and I go every year, and it's a marathon. You're going to be there for three, four, five hours listening to music. And Heath went up towards the middle end of the night, and you talk about him being a guitar player, he could really play that thing, because a lot of their music yeah. is, is, is electric guitar, uh, twangy electric guitar heavy. You know, I'm fretting there, that's what that was. Um, you know, in my brain, I'm a lefty, so I would play like this. But it's electric guitar heavy, so, and he can play, and he still sounds the same. It's it's really, really great. And I'm sorry yeah. I couldn't be with you to see him again. I want to tell you what happened. I uh, I had every intention of being with you, but my building is doing renovations, and there was this jackhammering right below me that was... <laughs> Sound travels up and it was yeah. reverberating in my whole apartment. I'd go like into the kitchen and it'd be really quiet, but coming in here because of where this is in relation to where they're doing it, you would have heard it and probably even would have felt it. I mean, I'm five mm -hmm. floors above and it was still really, really loud. Yeah, I you you FaceTimed me earlier like, hey, I'm not gonna be able to do this because this is what's going on. And it was pretty loud. Do you still have your headache? No, that went away. And that's part of, I was grumpy about recording the intro and outro. I was grumpy. <laughs> I, I was well, like laying down, trying to get rid of the headache. And you were like, you need to do it or I'm not getting you an Ares Tour t-shirt. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I knew that would be the, uh, the catalyst there that would launch your butt out of bed and, or whatever you were doing and get you to record. Because then I hear a text comes back within five minutes. I expected something sooner that was even snarky or, or a phone call. But instead I get a text. Okay. In an hour. Let's do it in an hour. So, <laughs> yeah. So well, I'm I just want to, you know, we, we have, we had travel before, before this aired. So I just wanted to make sure, you know, we got everything we needed in line yep. so I can kind of relax when, when we're traveling, not worried about episodes needing edited and, and all that. Mm -hmm. So, and that travel coming up is another trip to Vegas to see Kelly Clarkson. Uh, and then actually, well, that travel has happened already. Well, coming up as we're doing this, right, right. Um, that travel will be to see Kelly Clarkson. But as of this recording, I have five shows in five days that I'm about to do. I have the Oak Ridge Boys. I have Beyonce Saturday. To, or excuse me, I have Oak Ridge Boys tonight, Sam Smith tomorrow, Beyonce Saturday, likely nothing Sunday, thankfully. And then I have possibly Pink on Monday and definitely John Fogarty on Tuesday. And then I fly to Vegas on Wednesday. So look out for all those reviews on themusicuniverse.com for the Music Universe podcast. No, 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 not yet, not yet, not yet. There's also another big review, you know, that's going that's already up as well. And it's a sea of red. Yes. Yep. Taylor Swift <laughs> got to uh, check that out a uh, night three of six in mm -hmm. LA. So you can check out that review as well. Only the biggest tour ever. And it's yep. only growing as she goes international. Uh, and then back here this year and then come back, back here. here. Yeah. Back here for fall so far as of this recording, 15 dates announced for October, November of 2024. So um, get ready because she's not done. And she's doing Canada in November, which is yeah. going to be interesting. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about that on a future episode. I love our tangents, but we got to run for the Music Universe <laughs> podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Buddy. Thanks for listening and watching. Be sure to check us out at themusicuniverse.com for all those reviews and more. And of course, you want to check it out if you want to hear that uh, new re-recorded version of Love is Stronger Than Pride from Ricochet. That's attached in uh, the article associated with this episode. And uh, at the Music Uni on socials, take care. <laughs>